Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video, I'll be covering how to optimize the Aardvark theme by Ghost Pool. In a later video, I will be going into the theme as an overview and a review, but I figure it would be more useful and beneficial to you to learn how to optimize your already existing website than to help new buyers potentially decide if they want to purchase it. This is a premium theme found on Theme Forest that for, I believe it's $59, which is a great deal for a solid and well-developed theme. And to get the demo installed, I installed all recommended plugins by default. And then I installed the community theme and I chose the community theme solely because I just thought it looked good. It, you can pick any of your own demos and the procedure is pretty much going to be the same. However, depending on the demo you choose and the type of site you're building, the content may change. So one thing about Aardvark is it's a really powerful theme in that there's a lot of functionality. But I typically always say that when it comes to functionality and flexibility, they're the enemies of performing of fast performing websites. And this in Aardvark is without no doubt. Now I could go through the regular procedures that I do with every other website, but I think for this theme and the functionality it has already, it's better to look at what we have installed and then trim down on the number of active plugins. I'm also going to comment that if you're using a slow host, such as any shared hosting, Bluehost, uh, GoDaddy, even, even on a site run, I would probably recommend you move to some kind of small VPS server. You can use uh, like a service like Cloudways, which basically backbones off of other VPS providers like DigitalOcean and makes the user interface really streamlined. I would recommend using Cloudways for this type of website, especially if you're building a fairly dynamic website where you're making use of BuddyPress, WooCommerce, or BBPress. That being said, let's go ahead and discuss what we had installed and what's actually necessary. So by default, it recommends you install all 20 plus plugins, but if all those plugins are not being used, you do not need to have them all enabled. And that's kind of where the issues begin. For instance, Layer Slider was recommended to be installed, but using this demo and the fact that it's a community theme, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to be using a lot of sliders. This looks to be the baked in functionality that comes with the theme, which is great. It actually looks really good other than the uh, white images because it doesn't import the copywritten images. There's no reason to include Layer Slider. Now you might be wondering, why does it matter that we are using Layer Slider if there's no sliders actually loading? Most plugins in WordPress load all their assets on every page, whether or not they're actually being used, and Layer Slider is one of those plugins. Just to give you a complete picture, on the original import, you have 63 CSS files and 111 JavaScript files. That is a really large amount when you probably don't need it. Of those, we can just see that Layer Slider is responsible for five, and they are not small files. They're very large libraries, including the Greensock library, which is quite bulky and has additional libraries and some of their other JavaScript files. Since we've determined that we're not using Layer Slider, and I don't really imagine me wanting to use a slider in this demo site, and I don't think that as a community set you would need it, it's best to go ahead and disable that functionality. So you just go into your plugins and then you deactivate Layer Slider. That cuts out a huge chunk of bloat to further improve your load times. So now that we've cut out layer slider, we need to look at some of the other plugins that we have running. So we have a live chat plugin. Live chat plugins are great for providing customer support to either existing customers or those who are looking to become customers. The problem is, is most sites that I use it on, they don't have a very active click through rate. Most of the time, this button sees absolutely zero use to the point that the company ends up dropping it some several months down the line because they find out that nobody's using it. And since this is a community-based website, I would probably not need it either. So it's best to go ahead and disable it in this use case. The WP Live Chat plugin is disabled. And now we'll just re, and for those who are curious, WP Live Chat support, oop, misspelled support. Can't type it today. is sitting at around 26 assets that it's loading on the front end. That's quite bulky and it's because it's a very complicated plugin that has to do a lot of backend processing to make sure that users are getting the responses in a timely fashion from when you send them in the backend. Now that we've turned that off, 
we can see what else we're running. So we have WooCommerce installed and we have Sensei and some other larger plugins. What you have to think about is what type of user base are you trying to provide for? This is a community-based website, so I'm cornering it around users sharing content with one another, joining groups, kind of like a Facebook. There's no reason in this use case to also have WooCommerce installed as it's a store. Now, if you have a more complicated website and, you're, and you are making use of WooCommerce, you're going to want to load the assets conditionally only on WooCommerce pages. And I'm gonna include a link either in the little eye thing at the top right or in the description below for a guide that I wrote for a little plugin. It's basically just a simple functionality, one snippet plugin, and it only loads the assets for WooCommerce on WooCommerce pages. But it, so if you're going to be using it, you want to include that plugin on your website to reduce the load on all pages. But if you're not going to be using it like I am for this site, then it's best to go ahead and disable it. And then Sensei LMS is a learning software. If you're not using, and if you're not trying to set up an online course system, there's also no real reason to be running that. It's really about trimming down the initial plugins so that way you understand what's left and to help diagnose and improve the remaining website. While I could just combine all the assets into one really large file, that would have a major hindrance on mobile devices in particular. So we wanna make sure that we're just cleaning up the site as best we can. So for instance, we're gonna keep RT Media because that's a solid plugin that has a lot of functionality for BB Press and BuddyPress. But while we do have Paid Memberships Pro installed, this is a community website. It's not acting as a membership website. Membership websites are trying to sell people access to types of content, and this site isn't about that. It's truly just a means of having people log in, share content about whatever subject matter that is decided upon. So for this website, it doesn't make sense to include the, buddy, the Paid Memberships Pro or their BuddyPress add-on because it's just not going to be used. And then the theme also recommends to install the Envato Market plugin. Just to clear up what this does, this allows you to keep the theme up to date and to also run backups of the theme so that but right before the update in case you need to restore. It's a very handy plugin. There is not any integrated updater. You can go here and install the Envato plugin but that's your only real option. You can do manual updates as always, but I always recommend having a form of updating through the WordPress admin panel to keep them updated in a timely fashion. So the BB Press plugin, we're gonna leave enabled because we want our users to be able to interact in a forum. We're gonna leave the Buddy Press and the X profile. Events Manager is basically a means of setting up a calendar so that way people can post about their latest events. And for this type of site, it would make sense. Having a means of events being posted, I could see that being a valid use case. Responsive for WordPress Bakery page builder, we wanna leave that enabled as that's a core functionality. WordPress popular post, since this is a community and there is an active blog, having a means of promoting the most popular content would be a good thing to have. The WP reset is truly just for the back end to reset this and clean it up. I'll deactivate it for now, but your site won't have this. The pay, uh, WP Bakery page builder should be installed, and then you're left with the user add-on, which includes a bunch of BuddyPress specific functionality. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run a second GT matrix just to see what happens since we've disabled some plugins that we've determined are not going to be useful. It's always good to start with trimming things right off the bat so that way you know what the real issues are that are left over. And then we gotta wait for the test to wanna process because it's been slow today. Here we go, analyzing, analyzing page speed and generating the report. So we managed to cut out just by disabling a handful of plugins. What is that? Uh, 62 requests and then cut around the, about 30% of the page weight just about. We didn't see much improvement in the direct scores, but we did see improvement in the load time, the request count, and the page size, which is good to see. So then we have to look at our waterfall. We have a lot of assets that are loading, and since there's gonna be a lot of redundancy in the code, we're probably gonna to wanna to combine to minify them. We also are gonna to wanna to look at these font files that are loading, 
And we're probably going to want to look at some sort of lazy loading because there's just a lot of CSS uh, images and embeds that are loading on the front end. So what we're going to do is we're going to first install Cache Enabler. You might be wondering, well, why Cache Enabler? The reason for this is, is because on this server, I am not on a Cloudways hosting where I have access to Varnish. So I want to have some sort of page caching. If you're on a hosting such as Cloudways when you have access to Varnish, then you would want to make sure you're using the server side cache. While I can use the site ground cache that this server has, I don't want to do that because the site ground cache will also optimize assets in their delivery speed, as well as offering mem caching, which I wouldn't recommend using for this. I would recommend on Cloudways you use Redis. And Redis is sort of like memcache, but it's more efficient. So we're going to just install Cache Enabler to give you a better idea. The one thing about Cache Enabler is, is it's not going to run for logged in users, which is important for us because we can't cache the back end in pages because users are logging in. That's why you need to have a really fast server, such as a Cloudways SiteGround. Maybe if you run it on like the GoGeek type plan, you should be fine, but you're really going to want to watch your CPU usage or any type of just dedicated hosting and VPS hosting is where you should be. And we're also going to install auto optimize. And then we're also going to install U image optimizer. You might be wondering why we are using U image optimizer and that's going to be to handle the image compression. The great thing about U image optimizer is unlike the competition, it actually integrates with BuddyPress to allow optimization of the thumbnails and the profiles and the images that they're uploading. And then we're going to activate cache enabler and then we'll go through the other ones afterward. Once you install Cache Enabler, you're gonna get a little settings menu panel, which will allow you to optimize its settings. And we're going to dismiss all these notifications because they're quite annoying. And we're just gonna delete the notice because user likes to promote their themselves very loudly, apparently. And the cache expiry time being set to zero isn't a good thing to have. In this use case, because the front end of the website has dynamic parts where the users are posting content to, it's actually ideal for it to be refreshed every so often so that way users can see if they're running in an active community. In this case, I would say try setting it to an hour just so that way as you get users who are coming into the website, they'll have a means of seeing the latest content. So this is just the cache expiry for all your pages. An hour is totally acceptable for this type of dynamic front end. It'll allow them to at least see some changes on an hourly basis. We're gonna clear the complete cache if a new post has been published as well, of, as well as comments for this use case. We're gonna enable pre-compression of pages. And then we're gonna clear the complete cache if anything has been upgraded. Keep in mind if you have server-side caching, you'll basically just be skipping this step. In this case, we're not gonna be enabling cache minification because we're gonna be using auto-optimize. So we're gonna now go to the auto-optimize settings and configure it. Auto-optimize is a great tool because it allows us to optimize the delivery of our assets by combining and minifying and all the good stuff that we're used to. So the great thing about this plugin is it should cause very little issues. The one thing I recommend is you uncheck the aggregate inline CSS, but you do check the data URIs. And then I recommend that you optimize your JavaScript code, but make sure jQuery is ignored, and then optimize your HTML code. Once that's done, we're going to reload and this should run without any issues. And perfect, no JS errors are detected. And we can tell that it's working because everything is being minified into the one large file. And then the same thing with our JavaScript file that's now in the footer. As you can see, there is a lot of code, especially from all these plugins that we're using. And if we were to rerun, rerun this test, we're gonna see the request count drop and the page feed improve. But we're not done because we're also gonna to wanna to look at the extra section in this use case. So the extra section allows you to do some additional optimizations that are not found in most of the other optimization plugins on the market. Primarily what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to combine and preload the Google fonts in the header so it includes font display swap. And then we're going to remove query strings from static resources. We're not going to be remo removing emojis. And the reason for that is, is emojis are oftentimes going to be used in a community such as this. So as you can see right now, we're sitting at around 2.5. Once the Google fonts are merged, that should further help us. 
And then we're going to go ahead and install, uh, activate the EU Image Optimizer plugin, and we're gonna begin its compression. So that way it'll go through and it will compress all existing images. The great thing is, is it'll also compress images on a scheduled basis, which I'll show you how to do after we run through the initial bulk optimize. So what you do is you come over here and you click scan for images. It'll see up 145 images. It's gonna look for the ones that are in WooCommerce as well as other folders. And then after that's done, you actually go to the EU Image Optimizer settings, and then you click Advanced, and then you click Scheduled Optimization. This will enable scheduled on on optimization of images from your theme, BuddyPress, and additional folders. It will run hourly, which is a good time period. I recommend highly that you enable this option so that way all images are optimized. We still have this running, so I'm gonna leave it open before I hit save. And then we're gonna to go to add new and we're gonna add a lazy load plugin. We're gonna to wanna to add lazy loading because we've determined that we have a lot of images and embeds on the page that we don't need loading initially for the end user. So typically what you want to do is you're gonna use really something like A3 lazy load. It's, it's a sufficient lazy loader that's not likely to cause problems. Great plugin, very active development, has 200,000 active installations. You're gonna to go to install and you're gonna click activate. And the great thing is, is it allows you to customize the loading animation that you get. So as you can see, you go to settings and you wanna make sure that lazy load is enabled for both images as well as videos and iframes. You're gonna click save changes and then we're going to run this to make sure everything is loading as expected. So as you can see, there's the little spinning icons that are going through. Those are the, those are the that is the lazy loading occurring for the images and for the iframes. So it looks like we're done with the bulk optimization. We're now gonna run our site through the tester one more time. And then we're just going to close this tab and we're gonna come back over here and click the scheduled optimization so that we don't have to worry about your future images being that are being uploaded by either you or your community members. And now that we've run it, we're sitting comfortably at a 93 with an 83 and 38 request. Some things that could be done obviously would be to remove the Flickr widget. I don't know anybody who actively uses Flickr, to be honest. It's great in the photography scene, but for most websites, there's no reason to use Flickr. I would strip that widget out and then that would resolve a lot of the remaining performance issues because many of them stem from this one Flickr embed. You got about, mm, I would say 10, 15 requests that are remaining. Some of the other things that I recommend doing is if you're additionally not using any of the included widgets, such as the Yowzer or user, you're gonna wanna go ahead and disable it. But for this site, it was using many of its features, particularly many of the ones that are embedded into the theme and it's a community-based plugin. So we had to leave it enabled. If you're not using something like BBPress, you can also disable it. I do have another plugin, which I'll include the other link to that in the description for BBPress, which should totally be fine on this theme because your forums are still locked behind their own URL and they're still on the pages that you expect them to be on. Otherwise, you're now sitting quite comfortably at a 93 and an 83 from the 71 and the 59 we got which is quite a note of improvement. And just to illustrate the impact that Flickr widget is having, if you go to appearance widgets, and then the right home sidebar, sorry, the, hmm, I feel like I had this. Where did I, I must have moved it. Hmm. Oh, I think I know where I put it. I think it's actually in the, uh, Theme. Edit the page. Aha, there is our Flickr widget. Remove the Flickr widget because it's not in the widgetized sidebar like it should be. And then you view your page. We will then rerun our test one more time just to illustrate the improvement. And we should be sitting closer to around a 98 in the range and have another 90-ish score on the Y slow. Future recommendations would be um, making sure you have a quick CDN, either something like Max CDN or StackPath or something like Cloudflare, making sure you're using fast hosting through someone like Cloudways, and then that would bump your score up from an 87 to about a 94, 95, just from adding the CDN. 
and your users, while their TTFB would be higher on a host like SiteGround, if you're using a VPS, such as Cloudways, then your backend time should be sufficient and your community members will be happy. If you're using a different setup of this theme and you would like me to cover it, please post it in the comments below. I'll make sure to look and see if that's something I can do. If you have any specific questions about your setup, please feel free to comment. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.